been my experience that the combination of just doing little tiny habits throughout the day or your week is what really makes a big impact in your life. Today, let's talk about several easy, simple, small lifestyle habits that you can do that end up making a big impact. Every single time you get a box in the mail, use it as your cue to declutter. You're gonna fill this box up with either donations or trash. Use that box no matter how small it is to get some stuff out. Get in the habit of putting your remote control for your TV away. I actually put Velcro on the back of mine. The floating remote is always an issue. Not only does it contribute to clutter, but not knowing where the remote is is kind of annoying. Skip the dollar section. Target has it all laid out so temptingly. <laughs> these marketers are very smart. They have these things laid out right when you walk in the door to get you in the mindset of overspending and buying things you don't need. Similarly, take inventory before you shop. If you have a list of what you need before you go, you will save time, you will save money, and you will save yourself a decluttering project down the road. Do not just buy the cheapest thing. Now, sometimes the cheapest thing is exactly what you're looking for. But honestly, if you buy the cheapest thing and it's not perfect and it doesn't serve the function, you'll end up needing to declutter it and spend the money again. If the perfect thing is the cheapest thing, bonus. Schedule in monthly trips to the donation center. This keeps you and your family motivated to declutter. And it's just a really good habit to get yourself into. When I started implementing the use it up rule several years ago, it changed my life. Decide now that you're not gonna buy anything new until you've used up what you have. If you've got 10 bottles of lotion, you probably don't need to buy lotion for the next year, which is amazing. Or you can declutter the ones that were not good for you. You get where I'm going with this. Just commit to not buying a new one until the old one is completely gone. We often think of the one in one out rule with purchasing. So if you're gonna buy a sweater, you're gonna get rid of an item in your closet to make room. But I love applying this to relocating items. So if you're gonna go put something away in the junk drawer, grab one item out or better yet, grab two items out, a piece of trash and something you haven't used in a long time. And you will be amazed what kind of progress you can make with these tiny, tiny little steps throughout the day and throughout the week. Ooh, buy appliances with dual function. My vacuum has a detachable cord. You can actually use it on the stairs. So I don't have to have two, a vacuum for my main carpeted areas and then a separate handheld vacuum. Keep cleaners under every single sink in your house. This is especially useful in the bathrooms I found. I can quickly and easily reach under there and grab what I need. Make the habits easy. Make cleaning the bathroom easy on yourself. You'll be so much more likely to do it. I also like having one under the kitchen sink as well. I know some of you have said, I have to leave the toaster on the counter. I have to leave the blender on the counter, the coffee maker, whatever it is, because you're living in a small kitchen. Totally fine. I just would suggest unplugging these things. It saves on your energy bill. I love having a little return station in my house. It's something that I've mentioned to you before. I'm actually going to take this a step farther and suggest having your returns in the car that you can have that return ready to go. Maybe you do have a return basket or bucket and and it lives in the trunk so that you never miss a return again. When it comes to meals, especially dinners, make double and freeze half. I think this is a really, really nice way to save you time and energy and clean up in the future. I recommend getting in the habit of waiting five days at least before you purchase something on your wants list or your needs list. Now, if it's an emergency, buy it <laughs> guilt-free, do not worry. But if it's something like, oh, I'd love a new blouse or I would really love some new throw pillows for the couch. Wait a few days. Just make sure this is something that you really, really do want to commit to bringing into your home. I love seeing kind of everything in my house as potential future clutter. You have to realize that nothing in your home is neutral. It is either serving you or taking from you. Try to get into the habit of asking a few questions before you purchase an item. One of them being, where does it go in my house? Where does the item live? And then ask yourself, is it useful right now? The only exception I take to this is kids clothing and kids shoes that I know they're going to grow into. If I see a good sale or if I find something on thrift, I will buy it and store it. But even then I have limits to what I have allowed myself to keep. And then also ask yourself, how long am I actually going to get use out of this item? Is this something that I'm going to be able to use for the next six months or a year? Or is it something I really only have use for for the next 
week. <laughs> you know, you just be really thoughtful and that will help you realize if it's a smart purchase or one that you might regret. I love a good book. I really do enjoy reading, but I've noticed that if you don't have a habit of passing on good books, especially novels that you do not plan on rereading or books that you don't plan on referencing, you can actually grow kind of a cluttered library. Pack light for trips. I will never forget the time when we had only had one baby, our first child, and we had to rent. No, we didn't have to. We chose to rent an entire vehicle, an SUV, to pack all of our stuff. Oh my gosh, we could have saved so much money. You want to have options, and I understand that fear, but it's not worth it to me to be dealing with a bunch of clutter and digging through an overpacked suitcase on a trip. Did you know that a lot of movie theaters will let you bring in your water bottle? I just think this is a nice way to save money over time. Make lists. This is such a great way to use up the notebooks that I know you have lying around. Lists for goals, lists for things that you hope to buy, wish lists, cleaning projects that you need to do, decluttering projects, organization activities that you want to do with your kids this summer. It really does help with mental clutter. Use less detergent when you are washing your clothes, especially if you have a high efficiency washer. You can use half the amount that the little cup tells you to use and your clothes come out just as clean. So go ahead and Google that and try and save yourself some money. Okay, instead of going out and buying a brand new sweater or a brand new blanket or whatever, the next time you notice it's getting pilled up, instead invest in one of these. I've had this forever and it works awesome. This is the Conair just a little pill shaver and it really works. This is so inexpensive, but this saves you from having to go out and buy new clothes, new blankets. The next time you're like three fourths the way done with your soap bottle, put a little bit of water in there and shake it up. It will just make it last longer. I've tried it with everything and it seems to work really, really well. I know how tempting it is when you're getting dressed in the morning or undressed at night to just drop your clothes onto the floor, but if you take an extra five five seconds or less to put your clothes back in the drawer back in the closet or in the laundry, it's going to save you so much on clutter and cleaning. And remember that clutter attracts clutter. If you drop a pair of pants on the floor, it is just an open invitation to just fill that spot or that floor with more items. I love the one touch rule. Whenever you pick something up in your house that doesn't belong in that spot, put it away right then. I used to stuff shuffle a lot in my house and I still do, I'm not perfect. I've tried to get better about if I pick it up, I am committing <laughs> to putting it away right that second. So this is considered the one touch rule and I love it. It's very effective. Follow the two minute rule. This one might sound a little crazy, but it is very cool. Only commit yourself to the first two minutes of a task. This could be a cleaning task, decluttering task, anything that you actually want to get done, only commit yourself to the first two minutes. If you get two minutes into the dishes and the timer goes off, you're done. Chances are though, you will continue. <laughs> it's the first first couple of minutes of a task that are usually the hardest because they're attached with trying to get the energy and motivation to get started. Once you start getting in motion, it is so much easier to continue forward. See if it helps you with your motivation and if you're able to get more done. But really, if you're super tired, that's all the energy you have stopped, you've still made progress. Go through your clothes every single season. I know this can feel like a big chore, but I have actually bought clothes for my kids that we didn't need because I forgot to go through their grow in bins or their closets. Try and go through your kids clothes and your own clothes every single season. This helps you know what inventory you have and what inventory you actually need. Use the storage totes you already have. I used to think when I first started my decluttering journey that I needed more storage. I just needed more of those plastic totes. It would solve all my problems. It, the totes not the problem. In fact, you probably have too many as it is. If you have some things that you are looking to store, free up some of the storage bins that you have right now sitting in your garage or your basement. Those things are pricey. I have another video here on the screen that will give you some more motivation to minimize and declutter your space. I will meet you over there. Bye.